Tell me, it's Thank a you. 10 million Aussie dollar fine for this. These companies are raking in billions, as we've seen in, uh, uh, in the latest set of earnings. How much of a deterrent is this law? Oh, well, 10 million is not the penalty. That's one of the penalties. But the penalties are uh, three times the profit, $10 million, or 10% of turnover, which, whichever is the higher. So here, clearly, 10% of turnover is the higher of those three. So given that their turnover in Australia is many billions of dollars, uh, the penalties will be... Uh, up to, for each breach, up to many hundreds of millions of dollars. So uh, I think you'll find it will make a significant difference. I also think if the platforms were to, as it were, thumb their nose at the government law, uh, there might well be other consequences. But most importantly, these penalties can be very large. And if they keep not doing um, what the code says they've got to do, the penalties will keep accumulating. Rod, you know, the action follows uh, regulatory crackdowns elsewhere on companies like their France, for, for example, uh, ordering Google to pay for snippets of articles here. The, the, the uh, Australian government says that the code is world-leading. What makes it different? What the Europeans have done, the French, the Spanish, uh, they've linked it to copyright and they haven't put a forcing device in there. So our code is all about the uneven bargaining power. We have a number of things like this in Australia which work very well uh, when we introduce competition to telecommunications. Uh, the incumbent telco, which was called Telstra, had to provide access to Optus uh, and uh, that was a negotiate arbitrate model just like we've got here. So. What's different is that this is a negotiate arbitrate model. You negotiate, if you can't reach agreement after three months, you then go to arbitration, uh, you each put in a bid, uh, and the arbitrator gets to choose which of the two bids is the best one. So that'll force your bids to come together. In addition, we have a non-discrimination provision, so that if they discriminate against Australian news by not showing it, for example, that will also be a breach. So we think the ways that the platforms have got out of paying for content in Spain and France are fully taken into account and, and will not cause us any concerns in Australia. Hello? Oh, uh, Rod, Rod, sorry, yes. Uh, OK, but the thing is here, uh, Rod, how do you actually quantify the price of news itself? Uh, what metrics do you use? Well, that's up to the parties to negotiate. If it gets to arbitration, the arbitrator takes into account three things. One is the direct and, much more importantly, indirect value of media to the digital platforms. That is, imagine the platforms with and without any media at all. Secondly, what's the cost of journalism as one metric? And thirdly, let's make sure it's not an undue burden on the platforms. So I think by the time you put all those three metrics together, that will give enough guidance for parties to negotiate. Obviously, uh, you wouldn't think in terms of the cost of journalism that what is paid for would only cover 1% or 2% of the cost of journalism, nor would you think the platforms have to cover the full cost of journalism. So I think the parties have enough guidance to negotiate a, a, an outcome uh, that's acceptable to them both. It will be a much better, more even commercial negotiation with arbitration at the end of it because that will give muscle to the arm of the media companies, which they don't have now. Rod, what do you say to critics who are of the view that this move is to protect local media from competition and it is being pushed through at a time when their advertising revenue has collapsed? Uh, I just do not begin to understand how that point could be made unless somebody is 
extremely self-interested in making that point. Uh, this is about uh, a lack of bargaining power that the media companies have when dealing with the platforms. So the platforms are must-use uh, organisations. You must be on Google, you must be on Facebook. And Google and Facebook need all media, but they don't need any particular media company. So because of that bargaining balance, we have what is known in economics as a market failure. In this case, the market failure really matters because it is having a very negative effect on journalism. So this is about evening up the bargaining power to, to address a clear market failure which is damaging to Australian society. So I just don't accept the premise of the question. I think that's a completely, that, that completely understand, misunderstands the situation. Traditional media in Australia is hemorrhaging. Is this move enough to prop it up? This is not about propping it up. I mean, what will happen will happen. This is about making sure that there's fair payment for the content of the media companies that's used by the digital platforms. Previously, the platforms have just uh, scooped up what they wanted uh, without paying for it because they could. Uh, this is about evening up the bargaining so that they get a fair payment for comment, for, 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 for content. This will clearly help media. It will boost media in Australia, but it's not meant to prop them up. That's, that's again, a pejorative way of looking at the code. This is not about propping up anything. This is about fair bargaining. In Australia, this happens all the time. I and mean, when we allow, uh, for example, coal companies who have to use a monopoly port to collectively bargain against that port. As I mentioned earlier, we've used this when telecommunications companies needed to negotiate with someone who owned the monopoly on the copper wire. So this isn't unusual, and there was no question of propping up or anti-competitive coming into that. This is just sensible regulatory response when you've got a massive imbalance of bargaining power and in a situation where it really matters. Rod, Facebook and Google will be the first two to be targeted. When will the others be targeted? Is there a time frame? There's no time frame. Uh, companies get caught by the Act when they have... Uh, when there's a significant bargaining imbalance. That exists clearly now with Facebook and Google, which have enormous market power. That's obvious to everybody. Uh, we also looked at Apple News, but judged that they weren't in anything like the position of Facebook and Google. But if Apple News was to uh, gain a lot of market power, then they could get caught. But for the moment, it's clearly only Google and Facebook, and I think it'll be some time before others are caught. But if circumstances change, then they will be caught.